Good afternoon, and thank you for joining Betco Corporation's Enhanced Facility Disinfection Webinar. At Betco, we believe in professional performance every day. For over 70 years, our passionate commitment to helping our customers succeed and thrive in the commercial cleaning industry has been at the core of the Betco brand. With your success in mind and in the face of a new global challenge, we welcome you here today to talk about our new Smart Tools Enhanced Facility Disinfection Program, which is made for pros like you to make sure you are safe and that the deep cleaning and disinfection processes are done effectively and efficiently while meeting the needs of customers, employees, and vendors within those facilities. The program is unique in that it gives you step-by-step -step guidance and resources all at your fingertips. No guessing or list of possible options, just steps and tools to get the job done. And with everything happening in a snap, the program is designed to help ensure you are prepared for the new normal as business leaders. You are ready and able as businesses reopen. But before we get started, let me introduce our expert panel. I'm Leslie Thomas, Senior Vertical Marketing Manager. I have 20 plus years of experience in the commercial and industrial market segments. We also have Scott Brown, Vice President of Category Development. Scott has been with Betco over 20 years and brings a wealth of knowledge across multiple chemical and equipment categories. Also joining us today is Barry Rosenthal, manager of technical services with over 20 years of technical expertise and knowledge in cleaners and disinfectants. Please feel free to use the question function to ask questions during the presentation. We will attempt to answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. If we can't get to all the questions today, we will put out an FAQ to the participants following the webinar. We are happy you joined today. Scott Brown will be leading the webinar, so I will turn it over to him to get started. Thank you, Leslie. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. The Smart Tools Enhanced Facility Disinfection Program combines evidence-based infection control strategies supported by agencies that include the CDC, EPA, and FDA. The program is designed to help you build a comprehensive cleaning and disinfecting plan with tactics to put in minds of facility leadership and occupants at ease. From the main page, you can navigate to any step within the program, making it easy to get to information most important to you. You'll also note a couple quick reference guides at the bottom of the main page. The comprehensive product guide gives a brief description of the Betco EPA endless disinfectants products, the disinfectant products, along with several examples of hand hygiene. We'll also spend some additional time on these products later in the presentation. The COVID-19 disinfectant guide is a quick reference chart with details on dilution rates, pH, and quick reference guides for kill claims and dwell time requirements for each. You'll see that the kill times for human coronavirus are listed for each product. We've also highlighted kill times recommended by the EPA for each product. Many of these kill times recommended by the EPA for complete disinfection are longer, have a longer kill time than the kill time listed for a single claim against COVID-19. As noted a moment ago, we'll spend additional time on individual products later on in this presentation. Let's get started and jump into step one. <clears throat> step one addresses the preparation and planning for a comprehensive work plan. Prior to entering any facility for an enhanced disinfection project work, you should perform a site assessment. The site assessment will allow you to gather critical information, including total square footage, facility floor types, building room types, fixtures, and touch points in each room. The site assessment will also help you identify any facility hazards to plan around, plan around, as well as ensure you can plan for the proper personal protective equipment. It's important to identify hazards within the site prior to scheduling cleaning to ensure you and your team are properly prepared, you have the right PPE, 
and procedures to clean safely and effectively. We're gonna start with the identification of facility hazards within three categories, biological, chemical, and physical. Examples of biological hazards may include infectious disease like COVID-19, molds, toxins, poisonous plants, or even animal materials. Examples of chemical hazards may include chemicals, caustic substances, pesticides, or even heavy metals. Examples of physical hazards may include sharp surfaces, heights, structural issues, hot or cold surfaces, noise, and electrical concerns. Be sure to take note of any hazards and incorporate them into your work plan. When creating a work plan, there are several areas and factors to consider. Work zones, chemicals, and equipment required. We broke work zones into three different areas. A clear zone is an area outside any potentially infected area. This may be an area outside the facility, such as a truck, a trailer, or any area that's designated to be clean and free of potential contamination from the facility. The transition zone is a area for staging chemicals and equipment. It's also an area for donning and doffing PPE. This may be temporarily located in an entrance or exit and or located within a custodial closet. Anywhere that you can easily stage PPE, chemical and equipment would be a great place to set up for a transition zone. Finally, the operating zone is a zone within the facility where disinfection project work is going to be performed. Once you've reviewed the potential hazards, work zones, chemical, and equipment required, it's also important to consider quality and direction of indoor airflow, presence of electricity or running water, proper training of staff, and waste removal when completing your personalized work plan. Finally, we need to consider a plan for proper personal protective equipment, or PPE, specific to this site. For simplification, we broke this down into two different types of situations. Please note that individual sites or facilities may have specific guidelines that you should follow. Corrective, dis corrective disinfection, excuse me, is for areas with known or suspected cases of COVID-19 where you might want to perform a deeper, more intensive type of disinfection. In these cases, we recommend an N95 surgical mask or powered air purifying respirator, eye protection, disposable gown, gloves, and shoe covers that can be properly cleaned, disinfected, or disposed. For standard preventative disinfection, in an area without any known or suspected COVID-19 cases, we recommend the use of a surgical mask to prevent the potential spread of COVID-19 and help prevent contact between your hands and face. We also recommend eye protection and gloves as standard precautions when using cleaning chemicals. While proper choices of PPE are important, it's just as important we follow proper guidelines to don, that means to take, I'm sorry, to don, that means to put on, or doff, that means to take off PPE. The first wall chart from the CDC shows the proper techniques for donning PPE. This step four process is designed to showcase the proper sequence of putting on PPE and is listed in both Spanish and English. The wall chart also highlights several workplace practices to protect yourself and limit the spread of contamination in the workplace, such as keep hands away from your face, limit surfaces that you touch, change gloves uh, when they tear or when they become heavily contaminated, and perform proper hand hygiene. The second wall chart from the CDC shows the proper techniques for removing PPE. This step five process is, this five step process is designed to showcase the proper sequence for removing PPE and is also outlined in English and Spanish. Note the first item on the, the, the first item the CDC recommends that you remove are your gloves. Your gloves are the most contaminated surface. And by removing them first, it helps to reduce cross contamination to other surfaces 
as you remove your PPE. The final step is to perform, as always, proper hand hygiene immediately after removing all PPE. Now that we've completed our site assessment, we can move on to step two. In step two, we select proper application tools and the ideal disinfectant to most effectively and efficiently meet the cleaning needs within the facility. How you apply a disinfectant can be just as important as the disinfectant itself. For any disinfectant to be effective, the surface must remain wet for the entire prescribed contact time. When using an applicator, these devices, de these devices should always be used at a coarse spray setting to provide the wettest spray possible. There are hundreds of applicator choices in the market. We've outlined a variety of different applicators to help you determine what is best in your facility. The wall chart is broken down into small, medium, and large area types. The wall chart highlights the device type, power requirements, suggested spray distance, flow rate, the construction material of the sprayer, and an approximate range of cost for each applicator type. Small areas are defined as under 250 square feet, such as office cubicles, restrooms, or small break rooms. In these areas, we recommend simple devices such as a trigger sprayer, pump-up sprayers, handheld electrostatic sprayers, or even airless hand sprayers. Medium areas are defined as areas over 250 square feet, but under 2,500 square feet. These are rooms such as classrooms, patient rooms, or even larger conference rooms. In these areas, we recommend the use of backpack sprayers or airless ap applicators with extended reach hoses for easy application over wider areas. Large areas are defined as anything over 2,500 square feet, such as auditoriums, hallways, cafeterias, and the like. For these large areas, we recommend the use of cart-based applicators. The applicators have the largest holding tanks and offer the longest reach for large area application. Do want to note this at the very bottom. Please note that fogging or highly defined, highly defined misting are not approved or intended application methods for Betco disinfectants as they have not been tested for use in such application. Just like we talked about earlier, we recommend a coarse spray and these foggers do not apply anything on a coarse spray. We've included a video showing application of disinfectant on multiple surfaces. We can play that video. Now, I know the sound's not very good when you play the video, but promise me, if you play the video on your own computer, it sounds pretty good. So I'd encourage you to do that. You may also utilize Betco disinfectants and spray devices as long as the applicator is set to a coarse spray setting and the sprayer does not further dilute or alter the chemistry. You should always use disinfectants in accordance with their label directions, and the EPA recommends during this time to use a dilution and dwell time Recommend recommendations that are listed on the EPA end list that we shared earlier. It is advised to consult with the spray device manufacturers to ensure the spray settings are set to a coarse spray. Always apply disinfectants directly to surfaces. Now it's time to choose the proper disinfectant for your application. Beckel currently has eight products on the EPA end list. The EPA end list is a list of disinfectants the EPA recommends for use against SARS-CoV-2, the cause of COVID-19. The first one is Fight Back. It is a ready to use broad spectrum disinfectant cleaner, and it has a 10 minute kill claim. The second one is called Triforce. It's a concentrated disinfectant and soft surface sanitizer. 
it has a 1 to 256 dilution rate and a five minute kill claim. PH7Q is a neutral disinfectant, detergent, and deodorant. It has a 1 to 64 or two ounce dilution rate and a 10 minute kill claim. PH7Q Dual is a concentrated disinfectant cleaner with a 1 to 256 dilution rate and a 10 minute kill claim. Quadstat 5 is a disinfectant broad spectrum disinfectant cleaner with a 1 to 256 or half ounce to, half ounce to a gallon dilution rate and a five minute kill claim. Pine Quat is a pine disinfectant cleaner and deodorant with a 1 to 32 dilution rate and a 10 minute kill claim. Sanibet Multi-Range is a disinfectant multi-range sanitizer disinfectant deodorizer, and it's a mouthful. But it has a dilution rate of three ounces to five gallons and a 10 minute kill claim. Sidebet is a ready to use aerosol foaming disinfectant cleaner with a 10 minute kill claim. If you'd like detailed information on any product, you can click on that product and it will take you to the product page. The page highlights the product description, product features, tech specs, specific directions, SDS information, and other resources for that product. We have completed our facility site assessment and determined the best applicators for our best applications. We've selected our product, and now we can move on to proper infection control procedures in step three. In step three, we take our strategic work plans and translate them into detailed execution processes that follow, again, the CDC recommended procedures using EPA approved disinfectants with FDA registered hand hygiene products. We always recommend that you practice universal precautions and assume anything that we are cleaning may be infectious. Follow these general guidelines. Never eat, drink, smoke, or apply lip lip balm. Never compress trash bags. Avoid splashing or splattering when cleaning up spills. Never reuse a sponge or towel. Use tongs when picking up uh, sharp objects. Always dispose of your gloves and other equipment in properly labeled containers. Thoroughly wash your hands and always clean and disinfect containers and cleaning equipment after use. When cleaning and disinfecting, Always don pop your proper PPE, prepare equipment and chemical according to manufacturer's directions. Outline your cleaning paths and follow those proper cleaning procedures for each surface. Proper cleaning procedures are critical to any task. We've outlined cleaning procedures for three different surfaces as noted below. Hard surface task card. We'll always start with a hard surface cleaning and disinfection. Be sure to read and follow manufacturer's directions, instructions for all cleaning and disinfection products, especially in regard to concentration, application, and contact time. The CDC recommends pre-cleaning surfaces before applying disinfectant. Apply a solution of properly diluted disinfectant with a sponge, brush, cloth, mop, auto scrubber, mechanical spray device, horse pump or trigger sprayer device. For all spray applications, spray six to eight inches from the surface and do not breathe the spray. Treated surfaces must remain wet for the required time as noted on the disinfectant label. Allow this to air dry and wipe the surface uh, with a clean towel or cloth. If disinfecting a floor, pick up excess solution with an auto scrubber, vacuum or mop, and always clean out equipment and allow it to air dry after disinfecting. And always prepare a fresh solution daily or when the solution becomes visibly dirty. Here's a question we get a lot on and it's on soft surfaces. Soft surfaces such as carpet or furniture do require a slightly different approach. No disinfectant can claim to, dis, uh, to disinfect soft surfaces due to the fact that the surface is porous and it can hide contaminants within that soft surface. You may, however, sanitize with an EPA registered soft surface sanitizing um, according to that label. Start by removing any visible contamination and clean with the appropriate cleaners for use on the surfaces before applying the disinfectant. 
So just like everything else, we clean first and then we're gonna come in and sanitize. Mix Betco Triforce disinfectant at a dilution rate of a half ounce to gallon and apply that solution with a sprayer six to eight inches from the surface. Spray until the fabric is wet. The fabric must remain wet for five minutes. Blot dry or allow to air dry. It's always recommended to test for staining or color fade on any fabric prior to cleaning. If items can be laundered, launder them in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions using the warmest appropriate water settings and dry the items completely. In order to minimize the possibility of dispersing germs throughout the air, never shake or uh, never shake dirty laundry. Clean and disinfect your hampers or carts that you use for transport according to the guidelines set for hard surfaces. When it comes to hard surface floor care, we recommend the use of the following disinfectants. Pinequat, PH7Q Dual, or PH7. I'm sorry, PH7Q. Each of these products is a neutral EPA endless disinfectant and can be used on any water safe surface. Use the correct dilution rate per our directions. Apply the disinfection solution to the floor with an automatic scrubber or mop, and then wait the appropriate time as directed by the disinfectant label. After the prescribed dwell time, pick up the excess solution with an auto scrubber or mop and dispose of the used solution. Be sure and clean out your automatic scrubber or mop bucket and let it dry after use. Cleaning and disinfecting floor equipment between each use helps prevent the spread of contamination. This wall chart helps walk you through the proper steps to clean and disinfect equipment following its use. The wall chart also gives step -by -step, uh, a step-by-step -step solution for disinfecting and cleaning solution tanks of your cleaning equipment. This step is very important in preventing the spread of viruses along with removing any unpleasant odors left behind. When it comes to disposal of infectious waste, please follow federal, state, and local regulations for infectious waste disposal. Regulations vary, so please work directly with the facility and or local government agencies for proper disposal of any infectious waste. If the public has learned anything over the last several months, it's a clean hand save lives. This section of step three is dedicated to proper hand care. Keeping hands clean is one of the most important steps we can take to avoid getting sick and spreading germs to others. 80% of all infections are transmitted by hands. Proper hand washing can reduce the risk of respiratory infections by up to 20%. Hands are the most exposed part of the body to germs. Touching the eyes, mouth, nose, or even food transfers the germs directly into the body. In this section, you'll note steps to proper hand washing listed along with the proper hand sanitizing steps to utilize with soap and water uh, to utilize when you don't have soap and water available. We've also included a link to, hand, to a hand hygiene brochure and a hand hygiene wall chart. The hand hygiene wall chart covers multiple dispensers and product offerings, along with training aids, support materials, and proper hand hygiene training programs. This includes unique signage, posters, training videos, training workbooks, and many other resources. The last step of step three includes details on hand hygiene programs across multiple markets. You can download the PDF for a specific market that will walk you through a five-step process for implementing a successful hand hygiene program. These guides allow you to, uh, these guides follow a five-step process starting with gaining commitment, proper hand hygiene, proper placement of dispensers, implementation of the program, and ongoing communication. You may also click on any market image to be directed to a complete solutions program for any specific market. 
These market pages give you specific details on each market and may include resources that can assist you in developing, implementing a robust cleaning, disinfecting, and hand hygiene program in any facility. We've completed step three and we'll move on to step four. Step four is all about touch points. All reachable, hard, non-porous surfaces can be disinfected, but we must pay special attention to the critical touch points. Step four was designed to help you quickly and easily identify and confirm those critical uh, high touch surfaces with a variety, in a variety of different markets. We'll start off with the education. Each of the list points can be customized to your particular facility. These touch points serve as dual purpose. They can be used as a checklist. Wait till it uploads, I guess. They can be used as a checklist once the work is completed because these are on Excel. They're easy to customize. You can add, change, delete, or rename touch points to meet your needs. If you service multiple markets, you can download the comprehensive touch point list and get all the markets in one. Note that the tabs at the bottom of the spreadsheet that allow you to toggle between different facility types. Again, they're easy to customize. You can add, change, or delete and remove touch points to meet your needs. The following sections are pictograms and examples designed as visual aids to help point out multiple touch points in a variety of spaces, such as restrooms, conference rooms, break rooms, and office space as just a few examples. Now that we've followed all the steps and completed a comprehensive cleaning and disinfection of the facility, it is imperative that we document and communicate to our employees, customers, and vendors. We want to provide reassurance that enhanced disinfection was completed according to the highest industry standards, giving them confidence in a clean and safe environment. Step five has several tools to assist you, including a disinfection certificate, site surveys, customizable table tents, and a variety of wall signs that can be used within the facility, as well as entrances and exits. Let's take a look at a few. The first one we have up is the Certificate of Disinfection. You can download the certificate to build your confidence in your team members, customers showing your facility has been disinfected using an EPA registered product, and you're in compliance with CDC standards. You may also download a site survey. This will help you confirm your facility has been disinfected properly with the EPA and that you meet CDC guidelines. This checklist walks you through multiple checkpoints in a facility and ensures you have completed all cleaning tasks. With optional sign off for the building occupant and or supervisor to ensure proper communication. The customizable table tent. Download We Care About You, enhanced disinfection table tent to promote and confirm your team members, to confirm that your team members uh, and customers that all horizontal surfaces within your facility are clean and are in compliance with CDC guidelines. The table tent six by six and is suitable for any setting in the workplace. You can even fully customize these materials uh, as one of these is in Word format. So you can customize it any way you'd like, add your logos, your names, different sizes and such. Downloading and printing communication posters will help address fears that team members may have when returning to work. Place these signs at entrances to build confidence and trust in the right things are being done to ensure a healthy workplace. There are also social distancing signs, such as do you feel sick signs, or how to stop the spread of germs sign. You can use these signs in entrances, common areas, break rooms, restrooms, hallways, 
or other areas within your facility. Finally, you can download and post these hand washing procedure wall charts at all hand washing stations. These wall charts will remind team members of the importance of hand washing and how often it is important to spread, uh, to stop the spread of germs. You can use the word format to fully customize your material or even add your logo. We hope this program has, been, uh, has, br has brought great value to you and your customers. We encourage all of you to take some time to review the program details yourself. Utilize any or all the program materials to help you build a customized program for yourself, your employees, and your customers. I would also encourage you to utilize the newest BETCO training video available on BETCO.com on BETCO U for enhanced facility disinfection. It's a great training tool that covers everything we discussed today and with even more detail. You can take a quiz at the end of the course and receive a training certificate for the online course. If you'd like to learn more or speak directly with a BETCO representative, you can complete the sign up to learn more at the bottom of the page. Once submitted, a BETCO rep will contact you and help answer any questions and help you launch a successful cleaning and disinfection program. You may also click on the link to download all program materials where it says download the program now. This includes all materials, the wall charts, the documents, even has the frequently asked questions uh, with answers to the most important questions. We hope this will help you in developing your personalized cleaning plan for any facility. At this time, we will answer as many questions as possible with the remaining time. Please use the uh, Q&A function to ask questions. If we can't get to all the questions today, we will be sending out a frequently asked questions uh, sheet following the webinar. Thank you. All right, there's some great questions here. So I'm gonna just knock them out one by one here. Um, First question, for preventative disinfecting, do you recommend cleaning before using a sprayer application? Uh, that's a great question. Um, in the most, for the most part, um, unless there is um, gross or um, a visible soil, heavy soil present, that has to be removed first. If it's a, if it's a clean area and there's no visible soil, our, our products are cleaner disinfectants and they can be used directly on the surface. So again, if you see visible soil, uh, you wanna remove that first. That may, uh, they, that may affect the performance of the, disinfect, the disinfectant. Otherwise, um, just disinfect as normal. Okay, next question. Do you think we can anticipate new disinfecting protocols for facilities like schools, office buildings? What are some of the factors to determine which disinfecting method to use during the day? Um, this is a uh, very, uh, very tough question to answer. All facilities are, are different. Um, I would say again, as we, as we mentioned, Let's focus on the um, on the high touch points, the areas that are frequently touched, like door handles, bathroom surfaces, handrails, and um, and the fact and and the factor is how many people are going to be in the building um, would determine how often you're going to disinfect. Is can are the people isolated? So you know, obviously, you don't want to be spraying disinfectant around where there's a bunch of people. So all of these are going to uh, are going to contribute to that. Obviously, um, we want to disinfect as many high touch points areas, but we want to keep our people safe as well. All right, kill claim. Is that the time chemical must stay wet on the surface? Uh, kill claim is the type of organism that it kills, and the dwell time or uh, contact time is how long it must stay wet on the surface. When cleaning, must all rags be discarded or can they be washed and reused? Um, for the most, for the most part, um, if we're a suspected COVID case, or um, we need to assume that the uh, that the rags are uh, are contaminated, I would recommend um, segregating those and putting them in like a, a, a separate bag, and then they can be laundered, um, laundered on high heat um, uh, for um, for uh, best best procedures. Okay, how do you recommend computer keyboards? How do we keep it wet for 10 minutes? So that's a great question. We were just discussing that before. 
um, very um, difficult to keep the surface wet. We don't want to spray the keyboard directly because we're probably going to fry the keyboard. Um, my recommendation would be to spray that onto a microfiber towel and wipe down the keyboard. If that, uh, another thing is since you are the one using the keyboard, make sure you wash your hands as we talked about. Um, you're going to be, you don't, you don't want to uh, contaminate your own keyboard. So uh, wash your hands frequently. And finally, they do now start to make some of these uh, keyboard guards. You might want to consider that um, as well. What is your opinion on products applications that have a quote, continuous protection claim. They claim that it disinfects for three to six months. There have been a lot of these products out in the market lately, and um, I would be very wary and cautious of these products. These products basically claim that they inhibit the growth of mold and mildew and reduce the odors on the surface, but they have no vir viral claims at all. As we know, uh, COVID-19 is caused by a coronavirus. Um, without that claim, um, it would be very risky on my part to, to, to just, just take part in, and, um, and hope that it's really disinfected for three to six months. Again, the EPA recommends disinfecting the surface. That is the, that is the way that we're going to stop the spread of germs on surfaces, is to disinfect the surface, not some of these treatments that don't even have any specific claims. Do you have a disinfectant that you would recommend for wood surfaces? If it is sealed wood, I have no problem with using any of these disinfectants that we have in our, in our program. Um, unsealed wood, I would avoid it. Water and wood don't mix. These are water-based disinfectants, so be careful there. But sealed wood, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have that issue. I wouldn't have any issue using that. Are the download charts posters on Beko.com? Yes, they're in our enhanced facility disinfection section. Um, you can uh, click there and download all the, par all the uh, posters and charts. Step five. Oh, in step five. Yep, and they're, they're located in step five. Um, do we have electrostatic sprayers? Beko does not sell electrostatic sprayers. We have the disinfectants that go in the electrostatic sprayers. Um, so contact the uh, sprayer companies directly. Um, is Beko U available currently? Uh, yes, yes it is. Uh, you can go there and, um, and um, click on it, take the course. Um, how, okay. do you all plan on coming out with a product that can be used in a fogger? Um, again, this is not a, a real good application for these disinfectants, so we would avoid um, the use of a fogger. Eric, can you expand on that a little bit? Why, why don't we use a fogger again? Yeah, again, the fogger does not keep the surface wet. Um, it atomizes, it puts out some really small, really, um, small micron size mist that evaporates into the air and we simply can't keep the can't keep the, the, the surface wet for the desired the necessary contact time to disinfect. And to be clear, there's a lot of people that misuse the term fogger. So there's a difference between a sprayer and a fogger. Um, so they use the terms intermittently and and back and forth, but they are really very different things. So We have a question up here. How are you addressing current lead times for disinfectant products? So due to the phenomenally increased demand for disinfectants at this time, and not only is it uh, maximizing all of Vetco's production efforts, but also the raw material manufacturers as well that make the raw quad to put into formulas. So as you guys can, uh, can attest, the supply chain is quite challenged today. So what is Vetco doing? We're making disinfectants as fast as we can with the raw materials that we make. We're also adding additional enlisted disinfectants to our line. So over the next 30 days, you will, we will be adding two additional enlisted disinfectants to the line, one of them being GE uh, Fightback and the other one being Oxy Fightback. So look for those to be coming out. So we're doing everything that we can to provide you the disinfectants and uh, allow you to clean for health in the facilities that you're in. Okay, uh, I got a question about uh, porous surfaces. As we mentioned before, I want to clean the surface well and then um, use the um, soft surface sanitizer Triforce in order to, uh, in order to clean that. Um, you can follow the specific directions on that label, but we spray the surface allow it to uh to dwell for five minutes 
Um, <clears throat> can the disinfectant be left on the surface or do they all have to be wiped away? Um, this, is a, this is a good question. Um, the, the, for the most part, most of our disinfectants will say either um, allow to air dry or wipe after, after the contact time. So that's going to be dependent on the critical on the critical surface. Obviously, if something is, you know, could potentially be damaged or um, or or be be touched in a you know in a by uh, by someone who might be sick or, or what have you, we want to wipe the surface. If it's just more of a, a general area, we can just allow that to air dry. So that will be dependent on the surface. I'll also add to that, Barry, that a lot of that depends on the um, area of the country that you may be in or the weather um, that you're dealing with. So. You're gonna have different dry times um, in Arizona, where it's a dry, hot climate, than you will in Minnesota, where it's a wet, um, mild climate. So uh, dry times uh, are gonna vary, and that may make a difference on whether or not you have to wipe uh, any remaining uh, water or disinfectant off the surface. Does the pH 7 Ultra have disinfection, or should we be using a pH 7 Q? Uh, PH7 Ultra is just a floor cleaner. So if you want to disinfect the floor, you need to use the PH7Q or the PH7Q Dual um, or any of the other products that we mentioned. But the, uh, for the, the neutral disinfectants that are, would be most similar would be the PH7Q or the PH7Q Dual. When using an auto scrubber, how do you allow a dwell time when the solution is sucked up or as it is laid down? Well, that's what we have a method called a double scrub method. And with that, you first scrub the floor with the squeegee up, uh, vacuum motor off, and uh, scrub the floor. And then you go back a second time and uh, and pick it up with the uh, with the with the vacuum and the uh, and the squeegee. So that's how we get ten. That's how we can get that dwell time with the uh, with an automatic scrubber. Workers find themselves allergic to product or building employees. I hope they're not allergic to the employees. Uh, no, um, the, uh, we, we um, formulate our products to be as sensitive, uh, to be as um, accepting as possible to, to a wide range of people. Obviously, some people are more sensitive to, to, the, uh, to the products than, uh, than others, or sensitive to certain chemicals than others. Um, so, you know, if that's the case, then um, maybe that uh, employee needs to be reassigned or um, take some additional uh, use some additional PPE, whether that be a uh, mask or face covering or, uh, or a respirator. All right. Using rags to clean with is not carrying the virus from surface to surface. We have switched to paper towels to clean with. Um, yeah, they, um, the, <clears throat> the, um, a good idea that after uh, cleaning a room or an area um, to change rags, if you see them get visibly dirty, we want to change. We do want to change the rags. Um, paper towels are also a fine way. That way, you can dispose of them as you go. Question is: uh, Triforce effective on hard surfaces as well as soft surfaces? And the answer is uh, yes. It's effective on both. Uh, it is a disinfectant on hard surfaces and a sanitizer for soft surfaces. Okay, after dwell time, when you go to wipe, is it okay to wipe with a damp cloth, meaning a cloth with water? Um, that should be fine, as long as you leave it for the necessary dwell time. Um, I wouldn't make sure that that cloth is saturated. It just need, If it's lightly damp, though, that's fine. When using an airless sprayer, such as the Titan Sprayer and Triforce, what PPE is suggested? Um, in general, with these um, large area um, spraying, um, we would suggest a uh, gloves, goggles, and um, either a N95 mask or, or respirator, just because it's a lot of um, it's, it's a large area and it causes the uh, potential for um, uh, respiratory issues um, based on the amount of chemical being dispensed. Uh, since the quad set contains a small amount of alcohol, there's a really small amount of alcohol in quad set, especially once diluted. So. It is non-flammable. I would not be concerned about using that um, in uh, about any type of flammability uh, concerns in, in offices. Um, it's, it's the product is non-flammable. Um, well, Beco reps have state guidelines and be ready to help. Our Beco reps are well versed on 
all the, the different programs and the uh, and their different state protocols and um, they can go through as we know there's been a lot of different rules and regulations as far as opening up and what you can do and do you have to wear a mask and they are well, all well versed on that and will help guide you through that process you can click that learn more button again and um, and somebody can uh, contact you and, and set you up with that there's a question regarding do you have pictograms for uh, cleaning of classrooms uh, we don't have a pictogram but we do have a uh, checklist uh, for specifically for classrooms that outlines all the critical touch points within a classroom. Okay. All right, we addressed a couple of these already. Let's see. Okay. Are aerosols an effective cleaner for COVID? Uh, there are several aerosols on the list end. We have our side bet uh, two disinfectant that is uh, that is on the list. Um, it's great for cleaning. Uh, it's a foaming cleaner, so it um, should be should be wiped afterwards. But for areas, especially in restrooms like um, faucet handles, um, fixtures, uh, sinks, all those areas that are frequently touched, or in, in the kitchen areas, um, it does, does a great job. Ten minutes well time. So there are a number of questions regarding kill times and, you know, uh, do you have stuff with a shorter kill time? I would encourage you to look at the uh, kill time uh, list that is, uh, that's posted at the bottom of that first page. Um, the EPA right now is recommending the maximum uh, dwell time for all products. Um, as you know, the dwell time varies by the virus that you're working to kill. And so there you can have dwell times as little as 30 seconds to kill some viruses, but um, the EPA is recommending the longest dwell time, which most of those are between uh, five and 10 minutes. Um, but you may actually be killing COVID in a lot faster time, but I would again refer you to that list. Um, but right now the EPA is recommending the longest kill time for use on all products. Okay, uh, here's a question we get asked about a lot. What's the difference between sanitizing and uh, disinfectant? So sanitizers reduce the bacteria on a surface by, they say, three nines, 99.9 percent, .9%, while disinfectants kill bacteria, viruses, mold, uh, mildew. Um, both sanitizers and disinfectants are regulated and tested by the EPA in order to be, be efficacious. Um, think about it as uh, sanitizers reduce the bacteria to an area that is safe for the public health, where disinfectants provide a, a, a greater um, percentage of kill and is really truly the only way to stop the spread of disease or the best way to stop the spread of disease. Okay, what products do you use on food service surfaces? Um, this, is a, this is a real good question. Um, for um, food contact surfaces, you can use any type of uh, disinfectant on there. You just need to rinse with water once after the prescribed dwell time. So what you do, spray it down, leave it for, leave it for whatever the contact time is and then rinse it with potable water before, um, um, after, after use before putting that uh, area back in service. Um, we do, um, <clears throat> and other than that, you could use a, a, uh, a sanitizer, but obviously that does not have the disinfection claim. GE um, Is peroxide cleaner is a good option. Um, our peroxide cleaner uh, does not have a disinfectant claim. Um, in general, though, there are cleaners uh, as well um, do a very good job at removing germs. They don't kill them. So um, obviously, it's, it's sometimes it's impractical to disinfect all the time, uh, but cleaning does a uh, th does a good job um, as a supplement to the dis to the disinfecting. Will we be posting a recording of this webinar online? Yes, I believe that'll be in the Beco U section, probably sometime early next week. Are your, are your wipes disinfecting wipes? We do not have disinfecting wipes. So there's a couple questions about PH7Q Ultra uh, on floors and surfaces. Is that okay or should I change?
Um, we have PH7Q Dual now uh, is the replacement for PH7Q Ultra. So that product name has changed and the kill claims have changed along with it. Okay, what changed on fight back kill time? That's a good question. So if you look at the label, it says uh, two minutes for human coronavirus, uh, SARS coronavirus, with the EPA and the way that they, um, they're always gonna be as, as, as conservative as possible and take the longest dwell time as possible. So they have um, put the fight back RTU at 10 minutes um, for the, um, as a recommendation against the SARS-CoV-2. So that's, that, that's kind of what's changed, more of what the, uh, what the EPA uh, designated. How do you reach the status of sterile? I'm sure you're talking about the, disinfe the, <laughs> the disinfectant product. Um, in order for a sterilizer, it's basically um, there is high, high heat that can sterilize. This is, you really want to only be concerned about this with uh, surgical equipment in, um, in, in hospitals or acute health care. Um, so they do it by two ways, either by heating them up um, in, in an autoclave or uh, using very um, aggressive uh, disinfectant active ingredients. But it's pretty much 100% kill at this point. But for most of the surfaces that we're dealing with, um, a sterilizer is not appropriate. Based on the cleaning I see people doing, they're spraying then wiping away cleaners. This seems like a major problem. The public needs to understand the kill time. I could not agree more. Um, if you just spray and wipe, um, you're probably doing some killing, but can't be sure that you are um, that you are properly disinfecting the surface. Leaving the product for five to ten minutes on a surface will it leave the area tacky if the product has dried on the surface. I think that depends on both the product and the application method. Obviously, the more you spray on the surface, the the more chance that would be uh, to happen. If you are concerned about that, you can again go back and wipe after you uh, after you spray spray that on the surface. Specific product about getting more products on the uh, on the end list. Believe me, we are uh, vigilantly trying to get as many products on that end list as possible. So, and okay. Oh yeah, you mentioned a keyboard guard. Is this available? If so, what is your part number? We do not provide that. I would suggest going to like an Office Depot or a Target or something like that. They would probably be a good source to try to find to find that. Uh, we do get questions on uh, children's toys, uh, how to disinfect children's toys. Um, we always recommend that you're careful when disinfecting any item that can enter a, a child's mouth. Uh, the best recommendation is to wash the toys with soap and water, rinse them, and then allow them to dry. Um, if this isn't feasible, you can also use uh, Vetco uh, Sanibet multi-range sanitizer um, and follow the sanitizing, uh, the label directions. And then just make sure the toys are completely dry before allowing the children to use them. Okay, here's one I want to address. What's the difference between the end list and emerging pathogen list? Um, there, the end list is, uh, so for, in order to be um, on the end list, the EPA has said the product has to um, either kill um, a human coronavirus or be, uh, have an emerging viral pathogen claim. What an emerging viral pathogen claim is, the EPA put out in um, 2016, a certain criteria that said if there's a new pathogen that hasn't been that hasn't had a chance to be tested that they that products that have a certain uh, kill claim and it's usually a harder kill claim than the than the actual virus in question um, can receive this emerging viral pathogen claim it's not something that we can put on our label um, it's something that they the it can be put on literature or on our website but um, but the emerging viral pathogen claim came into existence at the end of January, and um, and that's that's a special uh, box that you'll see on that list then um, to show that it does have that uh, have that claim. So um, the emerging viral pathogen claim is very much part of the uh, of the EPA list then. 
Um, in a hotel setting, would Triforce be okay for use on bedspreads, uh, come in contact with occupant skin? Um, yes, I'd say um, as long as it's allowed to air dry, um, that would be fine. You could also launder the bed, bedspreads as well. Right, is there a dwell time just to sanitize? So that's going to be dependent on the product, right? So you have to check the specific product. Um, our, our, our Sanibet, for instance, is a 60 second sanitizer. Uh, some products, there are no directions for sanitizers. They're strictly just disinfectants. All right. When sterilizing, when I'm going to say, when disinfecting a typical office environment, do we expect all the wall surfaces to be sprayed, disinfected? Uh, I, I would say it would be uh, dependent on the expectation of the employer as well as you know, whether there's an expected uh, COVID case. Um, I think, again, you're going to need to, you need to focus on the frequently touched areas. Obviously, uh, we don't, unless you're a Spider-Man, not everybody's going around touching all the walls. Um, we want to focus on the, the, the frequently touched areas, the desks, uh, the chairs, all the stuff that we, that we covered, all the stuff that's in that uh, section four, that frequently touched uh, surfaces. That's, that's the most cr crucial thing. All right, I think. All right, we're coming to the end of our time today. Just want to remind everybody that a recording of this webinar will be put up uh, next week in Betco U. And to get to Betco U, all you need to do is to go to resources at Betco, log in, and then you can go into uh, Betco U here, and there you can find the enhanced facility disinfection module. You can find this recording and you can find other support materials there as well. If you have more questions, please reach out. Reach out to your regional manager or go to, as we suggested previously, if you would go to everything that we did today, we've been asked about this presentation, is all we did was use Betco's website and walk you through all the resources that are on the website. So if you go to our website now, you will see all of these resources that are available. You can download the, one, download the ones that you're interested in. If you want everything, you can fill out your information here. You can ask questions, and then it'll allow you to download all of the resources that you saw today with one download. So we thank you for your time and attention today. We'll be doing more of these in the near future. Stay healthy, stay safe, and have a great holiday weekend.